Baby, what's your biggest regret? My only regret was too young for Sade to do. My only regret could never take a Leah home. You know I am sitting here, right? Hey, babe, do you think this water is deep or? Shallow, shallow. Yeah, you're right. It's only about three feet. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Well Said Show, a podcast where your favorite entertainers could come, have fun, and most definitely share their favorite testimony. Today, we have no other than the amazing, beautiful Miss Sherelle. Hi, guys. Mama see this. She's a stand-up comedian. Get your little joke on. Hey. You may have seen her on her <laughs> popular Instagram page at, at Sherelle Patrice. She has over 2 million loops on Vine. She was a part of Marlon Wayans' What's the Funny? And she's been a part of Russell Simmons' off Deaf digital um, sketches, dormtainment videos. The list goes on. Mama see this. Talented. I do write and produce all my own sketches like how do you know that yeah and some of the uh, sketches i did with all deaf digital I actually directed myself so i wrote and oh. directed um but yeah i'm all around kind lady <laughs> pretty and behind the scenes too the beauty and brave all right so today for real we're gonna start off with an icebreaker okay okay so we have four different colors we have gold black silver and white first one let me know so one at a time. Okay, so go. If you were stranded on a desert island, what are three items that you have to have with you? Okay, I would have to have my tablet that somehow miraculously connects to Wi Fi. How is she going to charge the. Where the Wi Fi? All right, she got to have a tablet know, with really imaginary like, Wi Fi. Because and I like watching Hulu and Netflix. <laughs> so I'm going to be on an island. I need to be entertained. No, for real. I feel it. All right. What do I need? Um. A I good book. Great. A good book because if Hulu runs out, she got to read, y'all. Exactly. So we got the a Wi-Fi, imaginary Wi-Fi of her tablet and her book. And one last thing that she got to have. And one other thing that I have to have. Am I trying to survive on this island? Or like, what the <laughs> three things you got to have. Like, this, we going to say for the day because uh, clearly <laughs> she ain't prepared with is, no food. This is not a long-term situation. <laughs> this is just for, this for the weekend. This is me on vacation. Um, and then another thing I have to have, earplugs. Because in case I want to take a nap, I'm sensitive to noise. I'm so <laughs> mad at her. She is not surviving. <laughs> She's not surviving. Uh, what's the next color, Cheryl? <laughs> Let's go with this one. All right, so we have silver. What would you do in this life if you knew you could not fail? Oh, that's weighted. Mm. Everything. <laughs> no, for real. Oh, I, if you couldn't fail, like I'm gonna fail, I would just do everything and no, like take real. over the world. I would talk, talk to all the boo things I ever wanted to talk to because there's no reason yeah. I didn't fail it. Like I mean, I would just do everything. I guess I would have like no fear. No, yeah, I even mean, no fear. I would just do whatever I wanted to do. Cause no, for real. Take over companies and start my own companies. And I know, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> do you worry about the money now? That's I know. Right. I'm thinking too, like, damn, I could have taken over Apple. Yeah, I'm okay. on my mind too, and I'm gonna get it. So, since you are a woman in comedy, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think pursuing comedy is harder for women than male? And if so, why? Well, it's definitely a male-dominated field, right. and so. Anything where it's kind of like a boys club is going to be traditionally harder for women to break into. Right. I will say that people have been very welcoming in terms of males. Now, it could just be because they're trying to hit on me. I, say, it's really I, don't, you know. I don't really know. The yeah, 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 I'll help you, baby. Let me write this again real quick. Yeah, I'll be like, girl, I got a joke for you. Right. Um, <laughs> exactly. Say, yeah, like, you that could work in your favor and... Yeah. yeah, so for me, it's kind of worked in my favor because I feel like, I don't know if they're genuine or they're just trying to hit on me but it has helped kind of being a pretty girl in mm -hmm. comedy um but it's it's still it's still weird like it's like you're around a lot of guys i've done shows where it's just me and other a whole bunch of guys right. or you know and it's a different dynamic when you're one and it's just a whole bunch of men around. It just changes the vibe and the energy. And sometimes men think, oh, women can't be pretty. I mean, women can't be funny or pretty girls can't be funny. Yeah. So you also go into a situation where you have people kind of having a judgment mm -hmm. already and already mm -hmm. putting a certain perception on you, even though you haven't said anything and had any Agreed. chance Agreed. If a girl come all like raggedy, you know, with her jeans and chucks and stuff like that, and she just really laid back, you're more willing to laugh. But when right. you get a pretty girl, you got to be What's she gonna talk about? Exactly. And I catch myself sometimes doing that, even though I tried it. Yeah. And then I would hear my friends, my peers talk about it, and it is harder. Like you come on stage looking good, six to you know heels, just real pretty, and it's just something right. about. I don't know why. It's just a judgment that people have, and 
it's a perception that people I think just automatically assume because there's a lot of pretty girls but most of them aren't funny and there's very few ones that can kind of deliver you do typically see female comedians in a certain look and imagery and mm -hmm. so I think it's just hard for people to kind of break out of that mindset do yes. you believe that people <coughs> respect women in comedy because you know I see yeah. a lot of hashtags um, with support women in comedy like I see that's a movement now you know? Well, I think funny is funny, and so what people realize is that, like, if you can deliver on funny, you can deliver on funny. That's just the bottom line, and it doesn't matter if you are male or female, if you're funny, you're funny. So I think that the support women in comedy movement is really about showing that there are a lot of women that can pursue comedy and can deliver jokes and can be funny, and it's about breaking that mindset that we can't, or breaking the mindset that it's supposed to just be men and a few women that look like men or something yeah. and <laughs> that's why she do stand up right there we gonna move on to the next question okay. doing stand up is really hard you know mm -hmm. I tried it myself and I went back and you've been you know we talked about this you're doing it and it's really scary so what gives you the courage to continue to do it because no doubt about it male or female when you go up there it's scary some people like that rich but regardless it's a feeling that's like you know you gotta use courage to get out there. That pushes you. When I first started doing stand-up, and I'm newer to stand-up, I'm by no means a, you know, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart for right. example. Um, so it's a newer journey for me, so I can only speak on my experience that I've had so far, but I will say that when I first started, I used to have like panic attacks. I get so nervous to get on stage. But at the end of the day, I love making people laugh, and I love mm -hmm. bringing that joy to people's lives, and I love performing, I love being on stage, I love telling jokes, and for me, I had to focus on that love and mm -hmm. what I felt my purpose in the world is, and focus on that aspect versus focusing on the fear, because yeah. it was terrifying, and so every time I would get scared, I would just tell myself, well, now you have to go get on stage, now you have to go do it. Um, and then I took a little hiatus from doing stand-up and focused more on sketch comedy. Yeah. And then yeah. I will say when I came back to stand-up, it was interesting because I feel like I had changed my mindset as a person and I had become more focused on what I want to achieve and what I want for my life and that the only way to accomplish that is by working with fear and working through it versus, mm -hmm. you know, letting it disable me and keep me from doing what that's I have really to do. That's really powerful when you like work through the fear. Yeah. Like that is no other feeling like that. And I'm so happy that you're doing stand up again. Thank I you. Really <laughs> What's the ultimate success goal for Sherelle? Oh, okay. Well, the ultimate, I definitely want to have a variety show, my own variety comedy show named The Sherelle Show. Really? That's always been a goal of me, a goal of mine, and essentially the show would be kind of similar to like a SNL, Mad TV style, um, so that sketch comedy great. based, um, but throwing in my own flair um, with probably some pranks or like live stand-up type elements. And or something similar to the Dave Chappelle show. So I've always wanted to have my own show called The Sherelle Show and produce it, write it, direct it, where it's really my thing. Something like a Jerry Seinfeld or what the uh, Will Smith did with the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, kind of just having ownership of something yeah. where it's not only my namesake, but I'm a producer on it or a writer on it, a director on it. So that I do like have you're very involved. Like scenes. you're not just the talent. You're gonna yeah. have so much. That's dope. So that's I didn't know that. My, yeah, that's one of my big Well, that's what we're working on. So y'all, you heard it first <laughs> when y'all see it. Yes. When you see the Sherelle show, you already know it was in work. As you know, that I made this show well said. So, you know, entertainers can come and share their testimony just to give God the glory. Where you are, you didn't get her by yourself. So if you don't mind, can you please share with us and your followers and your friends and your fans a dope testimony? God's changed my life. Uh, tremendously. Mm -hmm. I will say like about a few years back I was in a really just dark place. Just very depressed place not knowing what I was doing with my life, where I was going, um, had just gotten out of a bad situation and just being in a place of like hopelessness right. and feeling like ha having a complete loss of self and just a loss of 
who I thought I was or who I was and losing all joy in my life. And so it was a really dark place. And uh, at the time, my grandmother had gotten sick. And she had gotten really sick. She got into the point where we knew she was going to pass. And so I had gone back to Virginia and stayed with her. And I was like, I'm just going to stay out here until I pass. And so I stayed out there for two weeks. And I feel like that was the first time I really understood God's plans and provisions for people because I felt at that time my grandmother brought the family together because my dad had flown in um, from out of town to be there. My aunt had also flown in um, and we all kind of had a weird little situation where the family wasn't as close and so mm -hmm. she brought, you know, I felt the family together and I was going through this dark time and then I was like miraculous because now I'm having these open conversations with my dad and my aunt that like I wasn't having before and just in terms of where I was and what I needed help with and I felt that my grandmother was living long enough to bring everyone together and that like God had the perfect time right situated where I was like I'm going to use this woman through her dying days or her last breath to bring wow. this family together and to heal Sherelle. And so that actually, when I was there, I finally like talked to my family about what was going on and what was happening in my life. And my dad was like, okay, well, like I'm going to help you come up with a resolution and we're going to work together. My aunt was very like supportive, and encouraging. And I just saw God work through my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward to where I am now, to go from a place where, you know, I was depressed, I didn't want to wake up, I was in this like dark place where I just didn't want to live, to God then like, while my grandmother was dying, connecting me with an interview for like this job that changed my life and then this job that all of a sudden just fell in my lap became something that put me in like a financially good place and then watching God like help me just rebuild with my father my father showing me certain ways to like handle business or handle stuff so that I could get back on track financially and then you know God working through my my aunt just to have like another person that just cared about me and checking in on me and then like these little wow. things that started transitioning into Okay, me getting my life back on track and me getting to a, uh, a happy place and yeah. just watching God do this work that before I just kind of felt like, well, how can I feel better? How can I get better? Like, I didn't really believe that he could have that ability to change my life and to put yeah. all the pieces in place and all the people in place for me to get to a good place. Um, so I just feel like, God's done nothing but bless me with like being able to just align me with amazing people that have loved me and cared for me, align me with great jobs to put myself back on track in a place where I'm like successful, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. successful in achieving a certain financial lifestyle um, and to just giving me opportunities to bring me to comedy, which was something that I never thought I would be in. Um, I always just thought, oh, yeah. I was going to be an actor. Never thought I would be actually focusing on comedy. So, you know, God just having that kind of fall on my lap and connecting me with funny people that funny people opened say, me right. to opportunities. Mm -hmm. And those opportunities allowed me to start making my own brand and developing my own brand. And so I just feel like I have watched God over the course of several years just place things and people and situations in my life that have done nothing but benefit me. And to go from a darkest point to like a high point where I just wake up and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so happy and life is great and I'm just in such a great place. When that like, situation could have like definitely took you deeper. Exactly. He never turns his back on you. <laughs> yeah. um, and that he will never forsake you. And that no matter what you're going through, he's going to be there. And like, it's just interesting because I always look back at like when my grandmother was passing us that time where he was like, okay, I'm going to reintroduce you to me, Sherelle, and show you myself and all that I'm capable of. Wow. Um, so That's a wow, amazing, perfect timing. It's funny how you just use different things for different people, too. Right. Because when I had um, one of the closest dead when my um, aunt passed, um, I personally like kind of like stopped believing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, 
like she was such a great woman and you know she was god fearing i'm like really having all this faith that she was gonna you know live you know and right. like it turned me like honestly the opposite like i stopped believing for you know a second and mm -hmm. you know when we became friends is when I started believing again. Honestly, oh, wow. yeah. Um, when we started, well, I was going to Mosaic at the time, and then you mm -hmm. introduced me to One Church, and after that, it was like a wrap. Yeah, you know I'm saying One Church they baptized me. I was done. Jesus, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm there. You know what I'm saying? But it's dope to see how he can use different situations for different people. Even while I was there, and she was passing, like I mentioned, like I got in a call for an interview for a job that ended up changing my life and putting me in a good financial place. And so it was like all these little things that were happening while something sad was supposed to be going on it was like no i'm still using she's here she's here for a reason like and seeing Aww. god use someone's life and the way he i feel just use that time to make sure everyone was healed and to align things for me to get where i am now like i just kind of look back and i'm like oh wow like that's how you did that you know just kind Man. of how magnificent he can be and right crafting plans that while wow. we're going through it, we have no idea why am I going through this and what's exactly. happening. Man, yeah. that's amazing, Sherelle. Thank you. Well said, Sherelle. Thank you. <laughs> Sherelle, please share with everybody where they can find you at. Drop your, you know, your YouTubes, your interview. I mean, your interviews now, your Instagram, all that good stuff. Definitely. Um, well, you can find me at Sherelle Patrice. That's share like the singer, C-H-E-R, and then L, like the magazine, E-L-L-E, Sherelle, then Patrice, Pat Rice, P-A-T-R-I-C-E, uh, at Sherelle Patrice on Instagram, Twitter, on Facebook, uh, I have everything kind of under that name, um, or the Sherelle Show, so check those out, follow me, like my stuff, I have a lot of funny stuff on Instagram, um, a lot of sketches on there. Yeah, we're back up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> learn about it. Yeah, she be dropping them. She be having some bomb photos too. Make sure you double tap. All I right. did do uh, occasional. Uh, she be popping. Okay, first you, you ain't gonna be mad if you find her. Okay, she be having all the raps be like rappers be like. What, oh what? yeah, I have a series. Rappers be like. Yeah, I'm about to say. I'm not saying it wrong, right? Her series is so cute. It's so cute. I'm not even gonna tell you about it. Just go. Look. Just go follow. Just go watch follow. It's it. gonna be underneath the bio, so it's clickable. So just handle that. You and won't yeah. be disappointed. You, you guys. Be follow Follow oh, this beautiful lady. Thank you. Make sure y'all follow the show, Well Said Show. That's everything Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, all that. And y'all know mine's Roach Baby. You already know. Get it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, watching this beauty right here. And support women, just in general. I think ladies encouraging, Aww. building up ladies. So, congratulations to Rochelle on this awesome show and awesome platform. She's been an amazing friend of mine for a while now, so it's actually honestly an honor and a pleasure to interview you. Thank you. I told you from like before I even dropped it, and we was we was over there in the club. I'm like, Sherelle, I got a new show. <laughs> you gonna let me? You know, she gonna let me interview you? She's like, yes, girl. She got her head in the club. Girl. You know, okay, but thank you guys again for tuning in. You guys have an amazing day. Remember to always give God the glory. Bye, Amen. Bye, guys. <laughs>